Welcome. Uh, we're with our distinguished and very special guest, uh, independent scientist and radiation expert, Loren Murray, M.A., Ph.D., A.B.T. Now, welcome, Loren. Thank you, Alfred. What you said um, is, quote, anyone with a desire to stay healthy should never go to Hawaii or any Pacific islands in our lifetime. Uh, <clears throat> one, and then, then you go on, as you explained, one of the main Pacific Ocean currents is carrying the radiation from Fukushima directly east across the Pacific Ocean. Does that mean that you believe that the Hawaii should be evacuated at this time? Um, we said that right after Fukushima happened. Uh, all of the Pacific Islands uh, north of the equator should be evacuated. They should have been evacuated as soon as Fukushima happened. And um, even uh, the northern one-third of Japan should have been evacuated, including Tokyo. Um, of course, that, that would be very difficult and incredibly expensive to do, and they're not going to do it because the people who have perpetrated this global uh, outrage, uh, they are using radiation, nuclear weapons, radiation, nuclear power, at, which produces fission products, and... Uh, they're creating a global nuclear pollution situation which is going to um, have many biological and ecological effects that uh, are not favorable to life on this planet. And they are combining nuclear weapons and nuclear pollution for depopulation with harp technologies and applications such as the Fukushima tectonic nuclear warfare disaster where they triggered the uh, Tohoku earthquake at Fukushima with HARP and uh, caused it to release huge amounts of fission products which is a silent global nuclear war and there's no place to hide. The tuna at the Skiji fish market in Tokyo, which I've been to many times, it's over a square mile, it's huge. And there are all these people running around uh, with chainsaws sawing up uh, frozen whales and frozen uh, tuna and just huge fish and everything, and even sea mammals. Um, the price of tuna this year at their sale, which started uh, a few weeks ago, was 95% down from what they were paying for tuna last year. In other words, the price was 5% this year of what they paid 100% for last year. So the, uh, the tuna industry, the fish industry is is just falling through the floor in Japan I'm telling you the Pacific Ocean is toast and if we eat anything out of the, the, the Pacific Ocean if we go swimming if we go to Hawaii on vacations we are toast well it, it, it sounds like from what you're saying, uh, Fukushima radiation is making swimming in the Pacific Ocean along the west coast unsafe for humans. Is that correct? That's correct. People are confused. The LA Times is saying yes. the Pacific Ocean is safe to swim in and there's and Pacific Ocean fish are safe. The state of Alaska is saying Alaska fisheries are safe. The University of Alaska says, wait a minute, they may not be safe. So how are people to know in your judgment? 
Well, you have to look at the money trail. And um, so any state, any country that is being so impacted by a nuclear war, it's a covert nuclear war, it's the most intense one that's happened. Um, they're going to protect their commerce. They're going to protect their fishermen and their fishing industry. They're going to protect their politicians and they're going to protect their governmental agencies and the federal government will also cover up uh, because they have even more to lose by uh, not hiding this truth. Um, so you can't really believe the mainstream media uh, we know that already, um, you know, if you have any ability to do critical thinking, you're going to uh, look at the mainstream media and join um, millions of people who have bailed out of the mainstream media into the alternative media on the internet. That's all infiltrated too. But um, if you begin to educate yourself and um, you make networks with friends and, and people who are informed and telling the truth, who want to really sincerely inform the public, um, you can uh, figure it out yourself. People are smart. They've just been told they're dumb their whole lives. But uh, people do know something is very wrong. Women, grandparents, they know children are not healthy now. And there's been so much protest in the United States and other countries against nuclear power. Uh, Chernobyl was a disaster that uh, increased global awareness and it greatly improved the technologies and the instrumentation for measuring radiation. So a lot of good things came out of these very, very horrific, very tragic events that have hurt a lot more people. So, um, it's uh, just that they're very powerful interests who own the media. Uh, the Rockefellers, who are the big promoters of nuclear power around the world, they own GE and Westinghouse, and they, they own two TV networks. Uh, their name is not on it, but they control the news on those two TV networks. You should see the... Um, list of corporations that suddenly are in partnership with Japan uh, post Fukushima. It uh, even includes the Federation of American Scientists. It's surprising. Amnesty International is in cahoots with TEPCO and the U.S. government on this cover-up too. So, um, you know, um, how can uh, six nuclear reactors blow up and, and continue releasing horrific amounts of radiation? It's a really toxic, the most toxic biological poison that there is, is ionizing radiation. It's many times worse than chemicals, most chemicals. So, um the, the answer to all of this tragedy is education. It's exactly what we're doing and what we have been doing, Alfred. And that's the, that's the ultimate solution. That's the best option. Because as people become more infor informed and the world turns on information, they're better able to respond in more appropriate ways to um, their own survival. We're, we're facing global extermination. It's so hard to believe. It's so hard to wrap yourself around this concept. I was in denial for like seven or eight years uh, just on the depleted uranium issue and I said finally one day, wait a minute, this isn't an accident. These people know what they're doing and that's when everything changed. I sat down at the computer and I started Googling a, a Google search on University of California plus uh, depleted uranium, plus nuclear weapons, plus London financiers, plus skull and bones. And that took me down a rabbit hole that I'm still in.
There's no end to it. Uh, the whole air column around this planet is contaminated now with radiation. Flight crews are dropping dead and have radiation-related illnesses. Uh, pilots are having heart attacks in the air while they're at the, um, the controls of the airplanes. It's really starting to show now. But going back to this young woman, um, I read the whole obituary and she had spent the summer in Hawaii. 2013, uh, surfing the whole summer. So I knew uh, that she probably died of cardiac arrest or a stroke. That's the most common thing. Uh, racehorses, athletes, football players, soccer players. Uh, this is happening not just a one team member. It's, it's multiple mem members in the same week announcing that they have uh, leukemia and and heart trouble and um, it's just hard to hide now and when you think of uh, the Olympics being held in Tokyo, Japan in 2020 um, is that ever holding an athletic event, event in, a, uh, in the middle of a country in, under nuclear war it just seems completely Orwellian and insane because it is Right. Now, uh, there, there's sort of two, two areas there. You just brought up the issue of the atmospheric air column. Could, I, could, we, could we go there just for a, just, just for a yes. couple of questions? Yes. Um, recently, uh, we had a, a, a person who was a, actually a former Parks Board Commissioner of Vancouver, D.C., fly from uh, Vancouver International Airport to Heathrow and and she brought along her Geiger counter and uh, what she found uh, was readings of uh, up to 3.60 micro sieverts per hour and uh, uh, the the annual limit for air flight attendants is 1500 micro sieverts per year so we did a calculation that showed that at that level, uh, uh, on an annualized basis, that was three times the legal limit of uh, what the FAA stated uh, for air flight attendance exposure to radiation. Um, uh, why is the FAA not measuring radiation and why aren't they telling the crews and the pilots and the passengers about this danger? They're protecting commerce. They're protecting government agencies. They're protecting corporations. They're protecting um, the, the uh, entities, the vested interests behind HARP and nuclear weapons. It's a huge global industry. Uh, defense and weapons are more than half of the U.S. economy and budget. It's, it's, it's a huge revenue source for countries. So anything that threatens that is going to be covered up and denied. People don't realize how radiation can get from Japan all the way across the Pacific Ocean to the United States. They don't understand that distance doesn't protect you. It's weather and geography that determine the amount of radiation deposited in the environment. And um, there are cities, I mean, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, because of the geography and the location and the currents, Los Angeles is getting much more radiation uh, exposure than uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. It's just the currents and the geography and the winds. And um, uh, cities on the East Coast, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, a city in Florida, they have the highest 
radioactive iodine levels in their drinking water of any cities in the United States. You would think it would be the West Coast, the Bay Area, but it's not. It goes wherever it goes, and with HARP and the ability to um, manipulate the jet stream or whatever they're doing uh, with the chemtrails, uh, they're able to drastically change weather. They can create these huge snowstorms that are unprecedented. They're off scale. Now, let's go back to talk about the oceans and the uh, vortices and the currents and so forth. What has happened is that the uh, Kirishio current uh, begins in warm water in around Taiwan and it flows north with a lot of fish and fish embryos in it. And it's a very strong current. It's the strongest current in the world, and it's part of the global ocean circulation. And it meets the Oeyama current, which is a very cold Arctic current that's coming down the Caroline Islands uh, along the east coast of, of Asia and East Asia. And it meets the Kirishio current um, just south of Hokkaido and just uh, north of uh, the, the end of Honshu. And they move out east in an easterly direction into the Pacific Ocean. Now, between these currents, when the Kirishio current is coming up from Taiwan, there's a counter current. And in between these currents that are going in different directions, they set up eddies or vortexes or uh, whirlpools. And it's in those whirlpools that lift nutrients out of deeper levels of water in the water column in the ocean. That's where the baby fish go. That's where the breeding happens. That's where the, um, the fishing happens. And the whole east coast of Japan down to Tokyo is the um, richest fishing um, areas in Japan. It's much better than the west side that faces China. And it's because of these currents and the upwelling of food and nutrients and uh, uh, other things that to eat. There's a lot of plankton that lives in them. And I actually have photographs of them from space, taken from space. And you can actually see these vortexes in from space uh, offshore from Japan, and they're loaded with fish. Okay, they're right offshore from Fukushima. So the fish that are breeding there, that are hatching there, that are feeding there are all radioactive. And we do know that the tuna breed um, off, offshore from Japan in these areas I'm talking about. And all the tuna that they're catching off the West Coast, 100% of North America, is all contaminated with Fukushima radiation. Um, the um, China study that I mentioned at the beginning of the interview is very, very important because what the Chinese reported, they had a map showing the cesium levels from the from China to the uh, coast uh, of North America. And uh, over time, this uh, cesium is increasing in the tsunami debris field. And it's higher, it's getting higher faster um, with the end of that debris field that's heading for North America than the, the end of it which is heading for China. And the reason that the cesium levels are increasing is because the debris field is picking up or attracting or um, mixing with the continual releases from Japan. So the cesium levels are just getting higher and higher. 
Now, cesium is just the index. It's an indicator for nearly 2,000 other fission products that are coming out of uh, Japan, out of Fukushima. So, uh, cesium is only one element, one isotope or, or one um, uh, family of isotopes that are uh, very dangerous. Cesium is especially dangerous because it attaches to the heart and um, that is why we're having so many heart attacks and heart trouble, uh, strokes and so forth. It's the effects of the cesium and it's just increasing the levels are increasing in the Pacific that people and, and uh, wildlife and, and um, even plants are being exposed to. Every day it's increasing. There's no way to turn it off. It's a nuclear war.